Thank you for tuning in. Right next to me, I have the DJI Inspire One. Now, this was sent to a friend of mine. He's a digital photographer, and he wants to take his business to the next level. So he bought the Inspire One to get a good camera in the air. And before he did, he asked me if I would help him get it configured and show him just how to pilot it. So I've never worked with Inspire One, but I told him I'd love to as long as he would let me do this on the channel. And if you've seen any of my previous content, you'll know that my only exposure to DJI products are with the NASA. I've done a lot of work with that, configuring it. And working with the Inspire One is going to be completely new to me. So this video will be my first hands-on experience with the Inspire One. Very nice packaging. Comes with a soft shell case with foam cutouts. You have the Inspire One battery, your camera, transmitter, props, charger, everything you need if you're like my buddy who's trying to extend his business, this will definitely allow him to do so. We'll take all the parts out and then charge the battery. You even get a nice quick start guide. And if you're like me and have done a lot of DIY stuff, this is a breath of fresh air. How many times have you received a box, opened it up only to find the product with no instructions? Definitely liking what I'm seeing so far. We have a dual charger that charges your battery and your transmitter at the same time. This battery is a 4,500 milliamp hour 6S equivalent. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and Open those tabs up, slide that connector on. See we're charging. And now both our battery and transmitter are charging. With everything fully charged, your status LEDs will be off. So we know that that's charged. I'll go ahead and just press that. And you can see we got a full battery as well as a full battery and our transmitter. Now I'll go ahead and mount my Samsung tablet to the transmitter so we'll get all sorts of telemetry and FPV goodies. This will also work with an iPad, I believe the iPad mini and the iPad Air, but since I'm cheap I only have the Samsung tablet, we'll go ahead and use that. Just make sure you have that mounted nice and snug. You can see I can pick up the transmitter. It's got little foam pads that'll hold that in place. Now we'll go ahead and use the DJI supplied and branded USB cable to connect our tablet. Plug that in. Before we mount the gimbal, we need to install the battery. So you'll see the battery connectors here. You want them facing the front of the Inspire One and we'll click that into place. And just as with any other setup, we'll power on the transmitter first and then we'll power on the Inspire One. So the transmitter is a little different than what you're probably used to. You need to press the button once, let off, and then press and hold. Then I'll press and hold. And it's powered on. You'll see that we have a red dot here. Then we'll do the same with the Inspire One. So I'll press once, then I'll press and hold. And you can see that our LED has gone from red to green, so we have a good bind. Now the next thing we need to do before we can mount the gimbal is actually unlock the Inspire One from travel mode to landing mode, which will lift up the frame and allow us to mount the gimbal underneath. And to do that, we have our gear switch. We'll toggle this back and forth four times in landing mode. Now in landing mode, I'll go ahead and power down. So we do the same thing as before. We'll press once, then press and hold. We'll do the same with our transmitter. Press once, then press and hold. Now we're going to mount the gimbal. And I still can't get over how just small, compact, lightweight this thing is. Three axis, 4K. Just appears to be incredibly well designed. Even comes with a ND filter for those super sunny days. Let's go ahead and mount it up.
we're looking at the front of the Inspire One with the gimbal mount hanging down and we're going to remove this cover so that we can mount our gimbal in place. On the gimbal there's also a protective cover. We'll go ahead and remove that. And you'll notice here this white line and we're going to turn this to the unlock position and hopefully I'll just slide this right up in there, push that up in, and then I'll turn back to lock the gimbal into place. Here's a good look at the front of the Inspire One with the gimbal mounted. And I don't know about you guys, but I definitely think this looks like something out of a sci-fi movie. If you followed my channel, you'll know I've done a lot with DIY, the NASA 3DR, but just my experience with this so far really makes me want to go out and buy one. We'll see how it flies here in a minute after we finish the configuration. Next we'll install the DJI Pilot app from the Google Play Store. Pilot app is installed. We'll go ahead and open it. And power up the transmitter. And I'll go ahead and power up the Inspire One. And that was the gimbal, I guess, doing a self calibration. Well, unfortunately, me being cheap didn't really pay off, so something is not working with this Galaxy Tab 3. But luckily, I do have the Samsung. Galaxy Alpha. These little tabs on the side that'll fold up. You can put your device in there, slide it down. So I'll launch the DJI Pilot app and connect the device. Give me to name my aircraft. So I'll just go ahead and I'll put my friend's name in there. James. Continue. We'll go mode two. Pals fine. Imperial units looks good okay it's talking about beginner mode so we'll go ahead and leave that for the default always change out of that and log into our DJI account all right we are logged in I'm going to click camera and it says beginner mode is active and we have a distance limit of 100 feet so accept that it tells us we have a bunch of buttons home flight mode aircraft state RC signal, auto takeoff, gimbal. Wow, there's a ton of settings. That's pretty impressive. Bunch of camera settings over there and a little mini map in the bottom right. And as you can see, it says we have some updates required. Looks like there's several updates for the Inspire One, the transmitter, the camera, and the battery. So we'll have to go through that process. So it does look like I can arm the motors and control the Inspire One. But just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and do these firmware updates. Okay, to do the upgrade, we need to remove this micro SD card from the gimbal. And in case you're wondering, it comes with a 16 gigabyte card by default. I have this SD adapter, so we'll plug that in. And I'll plug that SD card into my Mac. And from the DJI Inspire One site, there's a firmware download. I'll go ahead and click that zip file. So now we'll need to unzip the firmware. And we're going to put this bin file in the root directory of the SD card. With that bin file extracted and installed on the SD card, we'll go ahead and put it back in the gimbal. We'll power up the transmitter, turn on the DJI Pilot app, and we'll go ahead and power up our Inspire One. We want to make sure that we have at least 50% battery power left, so looks like we're good. You can, you can hear the Inspire beeping. Now it's running through the firmware upgrade process. Manual says this will take about 25 minutes. I'll go ahead and start a timer just to see how long it takes us. 
One thing that the manual mentions is that the DJI Pilot app will show the progress of the firmware upgrade, but in this case, maybe with the Android app, it doesn't do that. But we can hear the four beeps in succession, which tells us that the firmware upgrade is currently in progress. You can hear the four beeps have slowed down a little bit. We're about 15 minutes into the process, so hopefully we'll be done shortly. That change in beep sequence about 15 minutes into the upgrade process indicated that we were complete. So I pulled the SD card out of the gimbal, plugged it into my Mac, and you can see that it says the result is success. So our Inspire 1 firmware is updated. Now we'll go ahead and move on to updating our transmitter firmware. A couple ways you can upgrade the firmware on this transmitter. One is you can copy that same bin file that we put into the gimbal to upgrade the Inspire 1 firmware. You can put that on a thumb drive and plug it into your USB port on the transmitter. But I don't have a thumb drive, so what we can do is unplug our connection from our device and we'll plug it into the back of the gimbal. So now the gimbal is connected. I still have the firmware bin file on this SD card. And we'll go ahead and power up. Now after about 30 seconds, you can see that our LED indicator has gone blue and we're now beginning the transmitter upgrade process. You'll need to make sure that your Inspire 1 is powered up to do that, then power up the transmitter. As in the manual, that process could take about 10 minutes. For me, it actually took less than a minute. You can see we're green. Let's check everything out. And just taking a quick look at the SD card, you can see there's this log file that shows we were at 13 and now we're up 16. And just to keep things clean, I'm going to go ahead and delete those files. And let's power everything up and look at the DJI Pilot app. After powering up the transmitter, it asks if we want to allow USB debugging. And I'm assuming it's doing that just because there's a new firmware load and it sees it as a new device. So we'll go ahead and click OK. Taking a look at the Pilot app, you can see we can move our gimbal up and down. It tells us we're safe to fly. Let me go ahead and just arm it real quick and see. Yeah. So that's good. We're armed and ready to fly. You can see down here it says we're safe to fly in GPS mode. I'm actually in the garage and you can see the satellites bouncing around a little bit. But let's go ahead and put on the props and give this a maiden hover. These Inspire 1 props are 13 inch by 4.5 on the pitch and they actually seem quite flimsy and cheap. But what do I know? I sort of expected a carbon fiber prop. So you see a white dot here. We have a white dot on our propeller. We'll just line those up and there's a little lock and unlock sign to tell you which direction to go. So we'll push down and now they're locked in place and ready to go. On this opposite motor there's no white dot so we go with the props that are just straight black with it just we just push down twist counterclockwise to lock those all right let's see if some of this hard work has paid off now let me just show you guys the video feed i'll adjust the gimbal down and then up and we'll just try and do a quick hover in the garage and see how this thing behaves so let me go ahead and arm incredibly stable. You can see that the landing gear came up. They actually did that on their own.
Now, just a few quick points. The landing gear actually came up on their own. There's a sensor underneath that detects your altitude and we'll do that. And as I landed, they came back down. You can see that it's saying we're safe to fly, GPS mode. I have seen that that has switched to needing a compass calibration. So I'm actually surprised I didn't have to do that. I'll go ahead and do that in an upcoming video. Well, that was my first go with this Inspire One and I'm not going to lie, it's truly amazing from what I've seen so far. Very impressive. I'm looking forward to getting some good shots and video and then I'm going to hand it back to James or maybe I'll keep it and he can go buy another. That being said, I did have a little bit of trouble getting firmware upgraded, but other than that, I was pretty impressed with the process. And let me leave you with DJI actually gives you this lanyard that comes with the product. So it actually is a two strap, comes down, pretty cool. Obviously they want to get you supporting their brand in any way they can, but thank you guys for tuning in. I know it was a super long video. Wanted to document my first experience with the Inspire One. Hope you found it useful. If you guys have any questions or comments, please post them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.